Hello and welcome back to our gift wrapped edition of A Splash of Paint, where it's time for me to finish off last week's festive snowy landscape. It's already looking nice and cosy. The yellow at the bottom really recedes with a nice grey distant village. But let's make it a little bit more festive, folks. We'll get a bit of a Christmas tree on the side there. I'll just show you a simple way of doing this. I'm going to start off actually by adding a bit of a sort of distant footpath. And for this I'll use a size 6 brush. I've still got the colours there from last week. They've obviously dried up, but I can add a bit of water to them. I mean, that's one of the great things about watercolour. Once it's dry, a bit of water reactivates it pretty cleanly as well. It doesn't go discoloured or anything like that. And I'm using the same blue and just adding a bit of a distant footpath, literally coming around the bend there. And then I'll blend that in. Clean brush, wipe it over tissue. And then I'm just going to soften these lines into the sides. And on this one, I'll soften it into the footpath. Now, because it's Prussian blue in that colour, that was Prussian blue with a bit of a uh, little bit of grey, you might need to give it a bit of a scrub because Prussian blue is what I would call a permanent colour. And it dries pretty quick, especially if you're working in a nice warm studio. There we go. So you can see what a nice effect that gives. I'm just going to put a little bit of extra tonal work, even a bit of dry brush, just coming in from that corner there. It's giving a bit of a horizontal effects to the uh, path. And on that side, a bit of a diagonal, follow the hillside. That's better. So that's made a nice little seen as it stands actually. As regards painting a bit of a Christmas tree, I'm going to use the uh, medium tree and texture brush to start with. I will switch to a small one as I move on. And the colour for this, like a dark green colour, is a mixture of Prussian blue and burnt sienna, believe it or not. And that will give you a bit of a dark green. It might seem a bit strange, but it does actually go dark, dark green which for a nighttime scene is about where you want to be. It's a strange colour combination. You wouldn't think that a brown or red mixed with blue would go green, but it does and it works very well. So I've got the uh, medium tree brush and we're going to put the central spine of a bit of a Christmas tree just coming through there. You can see it's a very dark, almost like a neutral tint actually. And then working with the brush upside down, we kind of flick outwards Imagine the shape of the Christmas tree as it goes out. So I'm using the actual tallest hairs of the brush and I'm flicking it outwards one side obviously at a time. And then I can make it look so it's a bit spiky just by tapping down the edge. There we go. So we can see it's looking a little bit like a one half of a Christmas tree. And we'll do the same on the other side, of course. Flicking outwards. trying to loosely match the other side. And again, a few taps every so often is nice just to make it look a little bit more realistic there. There we go. And then there's a bit of a tidy up. I want to go for the small tree brush. Much more control with this one. And then I'm just going to put little taps on the tops and on some of the spines that are sticking out. Just generally making it look a bit more pine tree like. Making them all balance with each other and everything else. There we go. There we go. And then to make it look as though it's not floating, we're going to use a size 8 brush and some natural grey. But I'll put this into the original Prussian blue, what I did for the footpath a minute ago, making a darker Prussian blue. I get a nice bit of a shadow coming out of the base of this tree. It needs to be attached to the landscape. And even a bit of a shadow from the moon as it comes across the moon. Clean brush, wipe it on tissue, and then I'm going to blend all this in. And make it look as though it's part of the landscape there. Clean brush again and keep 
working at this, following the shape of the hillside until it kind of attaches itself down. That's better, that looks more as though it's meant to be there. And just having a few seconds tidying up, maybe even just darkening the edge of the footpath a little bit there. Same colour, clean brush on the tissue, make it all disappear away. There we go. And then using a square brush, or flat, or chisel, not too wet, you can just add one or two lighter areas inside the Christmas tree. And if you like to dab with tissue as well, ideally you'd do this while the paper is um, dry, but you know we're working against the clock, so just getting it in while it's a bit damp, giving a bit of a dab. And you can see it's putting a bit of interest, a bit of light into the actual tree. And again, it also helps me to attach it all down to the uh, landscape there. And I always think it's just nice to use the same green that you used for the tree, dry brush, and just put your brush flat to your paper and get little, little bits of earth and grassy things poking through, especially in the foreground of the uh, picture there. There we go. And you can see it's given quite a nice little effect there, just at the bottom. And then just put one or two little bits of uh, grassy things poking up. But hopefully, folks, you can see a nice, warm, festive scene there with some nice techniques involved. Right, we've just got time to join our resident bookworm, Henry Malt, for a quick browse through the SAA reference library for another inspirational read. Today's book is called Discover Your World in Pen, Ink and Watercolour by Claudia Nice or Nice? Why don't we just call her Claudia? That's yeah, a nice one. The title doesn't give that much away, Discover Your World. What kind of book is it? Actually, it tells you everything is it? if you know about Claudia. Okay. Because it sums up what she does and pen, ink and watercolour, it's pen and wash and she's one of the best exponents around at the moment. Yeah. And she's been doing it for quite a while. Okay. Uh, I think her first book was called something like Painting Weathered Textures in Pen, Ink and Watercolour. Right. And she still does a lot of that. Okay. She's one of the best exponents of gnarled timber, which is you know, not a lifetime's work, shall we say. Yeah. But wanting to do it. This is a very good example, actually, because if you look at that, it's not immediately obvious that there's any pen work in there. Yeah, she's captured the light, the sparkles plus the rainbow effect, which is actually extremely impressive, really. Yes, um, it's, it's subtle. Yeah. Um, it's very easy with uh, pen and wash to be far too heavy on the pen. Mm. But as well as that, she's also about intimate details. So if we pause, I mean, just the fact that she's painting a wave. Yeah. Again, it's, we've talked about it before, it's not something that you would go out and paint, Yeah. but if you're doing a seascape, there's going to be a wave in it, mm. and you might as well get it right. So is this almost like discover your world, here's how to paint a waterfall, here's how to paint a leaf, a tree, etc. Is that the kind of book it is? It's not so much directly mm. how to paint. There, you do, there are no specific exercises in it. Okay. Um, what she tends to do is break down how she's done a particular subject. So yeah. when we were looking at the waterfall, you could see that on the other page, there were the, the ink sketches that Still, were originally done. A few bits of advice and things. Yes. In there, yeah. Um, and it's an explanation. Uh, I don't, as far as I'm aware, it has no demonstrations at all in it. Yeah. And this is quite a nice little exercise. It's just basically showing you how to paint a metallic object, which is not something that you see a lot of. No. And it's a difficult thing to do in a transparent medium. So that is really good. I like that and it actually points the highlights, where to put them, etc. So it is physically objects around where you are. I mean, that's just a random thing that you'd see in the garden or something, I guess, you know, so it's, um, and it's quite an interesting book, I suppose, but different, I guess, as well. It is, and it's different for, if you've already got some Claudia books. Yeah. 
Uh, I wouldn't say, oh, well, this is another Claudia book. Mm. Maybe you don't want it. Yeah. She's moved on and there's more variety. There are okay. more people in this one. Mm. And there's a couple of uh, townscapes and nighttime scene. All oh, right, wow, wonderful. Which yeah. are, I think we'd classify them as interesting. Yeah. Perhaps I, not some, they're not my favourite pictures in the book. Okay. But the fact that they're there and the fact that you've got variety. Mm. Painting glass is extremely difficult to do. So that's a cracking little exercise. And it's nice how the arrows and almost like a handwritten style of font has made it quite friendly. Her it? original books were actually handwritten. I've noticed it? that she's not doing that now. Yeah. Um, and hasn't done for a while. She's got the handwritten kind of font on little bits. Yes, but they, the, the publishers have had the good sense to try and give the feel of it. Because yeah. it gave a sort of personality and intimacy to it. And it's a book about intimacy, actually. Mm. It seems a very interesting book to read because even down to a neon sign, that's quite an interesting thing to do. How would you summarise this book? It's extraordinarily difficult to summarise, so actually. It really is, yeah. um, it's, it's about so much mm. and so many details. And if you, go, if you just flick through it, yeah. your, your impression is, gosh, there's a lot to look at in here. I think we could leave it at that, don't you? I think, I think we probably could, actually, that's a, yeah. yes. <laughs> I think that's a good little phrase to finish yeah. on. Thanks, Henry. Again, we'll see you very soon. A great stocking filler to add to your reference library. Perfect for learning new tips and tricks, for adding some stunning detail into your own work of art. Okay, folks, time for us to take a little break, but join us in part three when David Hyde returns to complete today's Lavender Landscape Project. We'll see you after the break. Mm -hmm.